Paula Coelho heard about Veronica's story three months later when he was having supper in an Algerian restaurant in Paris with a Slovenian friend called, also called Veronica, who happened to be the daughter of the doctor in charge of the village. Later, when he decided to write a book about the subject, he considered changing his friend's name in order not to confuse a reader. He thought of calling her Blaska or Edwina or Maritza or some other Slovenian name, but he ended up keeping the real names. When he referred to his friend Veronica, he would call her his friend Veronica. When he referred to the other Veronica, there would be no need to describe her at all because she would be the central character in the book. And people would be irritated would get irritated if they were always having to read Veronica the Lunatic or Veronica the one who tried to commit suicide. Besides, both he and his friend Veronica would only take up a very brief part of the book, this one. His friend Veronica was horrified at what her father had done, especially bearing in mind that he was the director of an institution seeking respectability and was himself working on a thesis that would be judged by the conventional academic community. Did you know where the word asylum comes from? She was saying, it dates back to the Middle Ages from persons right to seek refuge in churches and other holy places. The right to asylum is something any civilized person can understand. So how could my father, the director of an asylum, treat someone like that? Paulo Coelho wanted to know all the details of what had happened because he had a genuine reason for finding out about Veronica's story. The reason was the following. He himself had been committed to an asylum and rather mental hospital as they were better known. And this had happened not once but three times in 1965, 1966 and 1967. The place where he had been interned was the Dr. Iris de Sanatorium in Rio de Janeiro. Precisely why he had been committed to the hospital was something that even today he found odd. Perhaps his parents were confused by his unusual behavior. Half shy, half extrovert, he had the desire to be an artist. Something had everyone, that everyone in the family considered a perfect recipe for ending up a social outcast and dying in poverty. When Paulo Coelho thought about it, and it must be said, he rarely did. He considered the rear madman to have been the doctor who had agreed to commit him for the flim flimsiest of reasons. As in any family, the tendency is always to place the blame on others and to state adamantly that the parents didn't know what they were doing when they made that drastic decision. Paulo laughed when he learned the strange letter to the newspapers that Veronica had left behind, complaining, complaining that an important French magazine didn't even know where Slovenia was. No one would kill themselves over something like that. That's why the letter had no effect. Said his friend Veronica, embarrassed. Yesterday, when I checked in at a hotel, the receptionist thought Slovenia was a town in Germany. He knew the feeling for many foreigners believed the Argentine city of Buenos Aires to be the capital of Brazil. But apart from having foreigners politely compliment him on the beauty of his country's capital city, which was to be found in the neighboring country of Argentina, Argentina, Paulo Coelho shared with Veronica the facts just mentioned, but which is worth restating. He too had been committed to a mental hospital and, as his first wife had once remarked, should never have been left out. But he was let out 
and when he left the sanatorium for the last time, determined never to go back, he made two promises. A. That he would one day write about the subject, and B. That he would wait until both of his parents were dead before touching publicly on the issue, because he didn't want to hurt them, since both had spent many years of their lives praying, blaming themselves for what they had done. His mother had died in 1993, but his father, who had turned 84 in 1997, was still alive and in full possession of his mental faculties. and his health. Despite having emphysema, even though he'd never smoked and despite living entirely off frozen food because he couldn't get a housekeeper who would put up with his eccentricities. So when Paulo Coelho heard Veronica's story, he discovered a way of talking about the issue without breaking his promises. Even though he had never considered suicide, he had an intimate knowledge of the word of the mental hospitals, the treatments, the relationships between doctors and patients, the comforts and anxieties of living in a place like that. So let us allow Paulo Coelho and his friend Veronica to leave this book for good and let us get on with the story.